to you guys. This is so fun to spend a little half hour with you guys talking about community in the cloud. I am May Craddock. I am the librarian at Albemarle Lab School. And the chat's open. Ooh, Perth. Perth wins. I feel like that's the furthest away. And good work. <laughs> so in the chat, because you guys have been telling us where you are, and that's pretty awesome to see for you from all over, put your, what you're reading now. Let's do that. Let's see what good books are rolling around during quarantine or just out of quarantine. We are just out of quarantine on the 15th. So what's everybody reading? Let's see who's hanging out. Ooh, the vanishing hat. Oh, that's so good. Oh, that one's a good one too, Pippa. Nice, Ramona and Blue. These are great. See, I feel like librarians, like we know. Oh, Red Rising, so good. I just finished that series in um, quarantine. You guys, these are really good titles. I love it. Okay, now I'm, we're getting into the chat thing and I'm not, <laughs> like, I really just wanna make a book list. So let's talk about community in the cloud. Um, when we talk about community, especially with young people, we're talking about these four things. We're talking about predictability, safety, commonality, and then those things together make community. So when we're talking about children, this is how we create community in the cloud. But we're not gonna talk about just kids today, so don't worry. I really love this quote because it really encapsulates the comfort and what comfort is about. When librarians create a safe space, it's not dissimilar from a home. As you all know, library is not a space, but a community, right? Everything that we have contributes to that sense of belongingness. It is a person, that's, it's us, right? We are secure, we are predictable, we are reliable, we are dependable, we are safe, right? This is what our students and our patrons need from us more than ever. So we're gonna talk a little bit about school library and a little bit about what public libraries can do as well. So I, I'm an embedded librarian, which is a bit of an unusual job. I am in a school, it is a 612 school and we work on project teams. So I have a history of science and math, a design teacher and an art teacher and the librarian are on a project team. It's a very wild, but awesome, awesome way to do library services. Um, to the point of community, one of the easiest ways is to build the sense of predictability is to have a structure around your programming. So students know what to expect from you every time and being creative can be within those parameters. So I'm going to show you just in the next three slides a little bit about that predictable structure what I'm going to do, and that makes me a safe space. So um, my lessons always started with a meme like this. Sometimes they were terrible, overused, and janky memes, but that was fine, right? There was a check-in, a video, and social time before we even got into the content. So we had two hours, but this little 15 minutes in the beginning was so critical to social emotional learning. So let's look at a check-in and see what that is. So tell me in the chat, how are you? It's a great way to be predictable and to hone in on social emotional learning, even in the cloud. So students might not have a word for the emotion that they're feeling right now, especially, um, young children, but GIFs are amazing for doing the quick like, how's it going? And you can read the room, even if you're in the cloud, because you know that the people who are saying D, y'all need to do a couple of jumping jacks. Um, excited for those bees. I see you out there. Um, but there is a lot of room to be creative within this structure. So they know that it's going to be 
a meme, a check-in, a, a video, social time every day. But <laughs> I love this question, what is A? And we're gonna talk about that in um, a couple of slides because that is an amazing question. Thank you, Ryan, for pointing out that you might not always know what the check-in memes mean. So there is a lot of room to be creative within a structure, but having that predictable structure really helps kids know and feel comfortable with what's happening in the class. Okay, so, oh no, you can't see my video. Um, this is Kid President. Kid President is always my favorite inspirational video for the day. So he usually gives us a great pep talk. It sets the mood for your program or for your class. And they give us, even in the cloud, a chance to talk about issues that the video presents, okay? And last in our structure is social time. Okay, I'm gonna stop sharing for just a second. Oh, there's my pep talk. Hang on one second. Technical difficulties. All right, here's social time. And social time usually looks like this. I don't know how often you all hang out with teenagers, but I'm here to tell you that if you don't tell them what to talk about, they're not going to randomly start talking to each other. So one of the ways that students and adults grew isolated working online is lack of structured social time. So um, I usually gave three choices every day, and this is just a sample for us today. So I'm gonna give you guys three of these breakout rooms. And you can choose in room number one, you guys are gonna talk about Star Trek or Star Wars. There's really only one right answer, but you can choose that room. Um, you can talk about the best book of 2021 so far, or you can do a compliment roundup. This was a favorite of the kids. I don't know that we know each other well enough to do compliment roundup, but you can. And you can choose your room and then go talk to each other for just a quick five minutes. If you need help getting into a room, just chat me and I can send you to a room. And you should all have the ability to unmute yourselves now as well. Okay. Thank you, Allison. Sandy, do you want me to put you in the room? Again, I'm happy to. Do. Sure. <laughs> Off you go. Maria. So for those of you who may not have done breakout rooms where you assign yourselves, mm -hmm. it, on the bottom of your screen, there's a breakout room section. You can click on that and select which room you'd like to go to. Mm -hmm. If you do want us to assign, just let us know and we can assign yeah. you. I'm going to pop into the um, Star Wars, Star Trek room. Sounds good. <laughs> I'll be right back. Feel free, everybody who's still in this main room, um, jump into one of the breakout rooms to give it a go. 
Um, so I'm just going to hang out here in silence in the main room at this point. Star Trek, Star Wars, we're in the pot. That's funny. <laughs> I'm sure it is. <laughs> the best. Okay. I'm going to close the fake out rooms because we're busy. Welcome back, everybody. I hope you had a good time in your social time. It's really important to both have that structured social time and to have a predictable structure that people know what's going to happen. And you don't have to be um, stayed when you're in that structure. There's a lot of room for being creative, but within a predictable format. So let's talk about our second element, and that's going to be safety. Safety is important to community. It is inextricably linked with confidence. So librarian, we not only serve our students, but also our staff. And um, in the case of public librarians, who are awesome, uh, the public. And this year, there was so much whiplash in format for us, where we're closed, we're open, we're closed, we're open, we're hybrid, we're closed, we're open. And that um, was disconcerting. But there's a lot we can do as librarians to help our teachers, our staff, and our public feel confident. And not just with using whatever technology is next, um, but mostly with tackling misinformation. Yes, Peggy or yes, choice is really important. Mm -hmm. One of the things that caused so much stress was the news cycle. I know y'all were feeling it. I was feeling it. Everybody was feeling it. So much happened so quickly and it was really unfair <laughs> that teachers had to manage classroom and also the myriad of completely understandable questions and constant destabilizing and stressful news cycle. One of the ways that we tackled that in order to create a community of learners was with fact sheets. And fact sheets were just um, pulled from reliable sources that are current. And the document continued to evolve over time as the news evolved. So we would start it when something happened. And then over the course of that news story, we would continue to evolve the document. And that way, when my teachers were sitting in class and students said, what is going on? They can look at this fact sheet that they have right in front of them and get the best, most current, most reliable information that is there. And that is a service that librarians can provide to the public and to their staffs and students that is tremendously comforting and provides that sense of safety 
and that they can depend on you. They're a person, you are a person that is safe because they know that they will get the right information from you, right? We have the power to provide the safety of knowing, right? Teachers can know with confidence that the information that is on those sheets is as current and reliable as professional researchers that can make it, right? I did do the first few on my own and it was a heavy lift. That is real. As things happened and those sheets became very popular within my district, um, we pulled in the rest of the librarians. So I would start a sheet and then over the course of the day and over the course of that story, all of the librarians in the county would add and edit that sheet so that it stayed current, even if like I was teaching a class and something happened, then another librarian could step in and make that edit. So it fed my own need. I don't know how many of you guys fell into the trap of doom scrolling because doom scrolling was a real thing, right? Um, and it was very stressful for me, but making those sheets definitely fed my own need for safety and to have reliable. Yeah, there was debate about what constituted a reliable source for sure. Um, I feel like that debate is really healthy and especially talking amongst ourselves as professionals without rancor is really important to um, knowing. We also, every time we pulled a fact, we cited it at the bottom. So sometimes there were like, five or six sheets of like citations at the bottom and just like link those back to the fact sheet so that if they wanted to know more, they could click and find that citation. Yes, I'm happy to find an example of the fact sheet later, but this is something that we can do to not only become essential in our community, but provide that feeling of safety and the safety of knowing that what they're reading is real. And that is a very cool way to create community. Commonality, this is really important in um, creating community as well. You have to have some kind of common experience, common values, common something. And that creates a very strong community. Going through something diverse or adverse, sorry, creates a very strong community. Creating an us, requires time, although not very much, not as much as I thought for sure. And some kind of something that the whole group witnesses or participates in can be referenced. So one of the ways you can do that is remembering funny things that just happened to have an hour ago. We had technical difficulties, we laughed about that. It provides a sense of belongingness and a foundation from which to build a bigger and stronger community. So I can't stress the importance of humor enough. So I know you're like, what is this even? So one of the most expedient ways to create community is by creating inside jokes. They're great, often at the expense of the teacher, <laughs> which honestly is totally fine because the one thing that all the students had in common from the very start is their teachers, right? So what you're seeing on your screen right now is my co-teacher, this is our math teacher, Algebra 2, Dr. Josh Flaherty. And um, we would Photoshop his face onto a variety of things <laughs> and use them as our Zoom away pictures. So having that as a joke created an us. So us in this project team had um, these away pictures that were hilarious. And yes, I went to like division level meetings and accidentally like turn off your camera and you're like, oop, never mind. There's Josh's face on a bunny. Um, I should probably change that. So creating those even at your own expense <laughs> is a valuable way to link your group together even online, right? Having memorable, laughably embarrassing moments Having a private vocabulary and expressions always brings a smile. And self-effacing humor can be especially effective as a substitute for defensiveness or stress. And it makes for a place of safety and familiarity for our students. So Josh, that was good meme making. 
They did, the kids did an amazing job on this. I want to talk about games. I know that the public library has been paying games online all year, and I can't say how much I appreciated those lighthearted moments. In line with inside jokes, competition also breeds closeness, as you know, right? Just because we're online doesn't mean the games are off the table. Our most popular game was Assassin. I don't know if you guys have ever played Zoom Assassin, but it is hilarious. Um, to play Zoom Assassin, you play it through the chat and students or patrons will die dramatically on camera in a variety of ways and then turn their camera off to indicate that they are dead. And then we all try and figure out who it is. So hilarious definitely provides a platform for inside jokes. And um, it also encourages the cameras on behavior. When you guys went to your breakout rooms to do the smaller group social, cameras came on, come back to the home, cameras off, right? But games are a very low stakes way to inoculate pe people to the stress of showing their face and their immediate environment, right? All of this, you guys can't see my amazing green screen, but it's right here. So you can, um, that is stressful. Like you guys have no idea, I'm sitting in my husband's closet, there's clothes everywhere, we're packing, but having those cameras on is stressful and playing games is very low stakes way to encourage um, cameras on, which is important to the mental health of both our students and our teachers. That was really hard to teach to 80 black boxes for a couple of weeks before they realized that it was okay to um, look at us, yes. So let's talk one more time about inside jokes. So one of, this is bingo. So this is a freshman seminar bingo, which is a class that I taught with Josh. And this is pretty much a list of all of the inside jokes that we created over the course of a semester. And you'll see the reason I laughed about like, I'm not even sure what A is, is because um, one of them is that I don't, I understand all of the GIFs today <laughs> because it was very common that I would pick one and I was like, okay, clearly that's excited. And yeah, no, they didn't get it at all. So um, playing this bingo is a very cool way to kind of codify those inside jokes. So now even though we are in person, we can continue to reference these inside jokes. Um, after every video, I would ask for thoughts. So I would just be like, thoughts? And then mute myself. <laughs> and now I can just walk down the hall and be like, hey guys, thoughts? And yeah. So it creates that sense of us, of knowing an inside joke and getting the humor of something and creates that community that can last from being online to in-person and make that transition so that even though our students only came in really to take their state mandated, mandated tests, um, they can have some humor and some commonalities and some things to talk about even online. Okay, the last thing I know I'm late. The last thing I wanna talk about is community of readers. I had book groups that started when we went to quarantine and it was awesome. Can I even tell you? It was so good. We pulled together these groups at the beginning of quarantine. They're ongoing. They have met every Tuesday since last March. So a year and a half of seeing them every single Tuesday. And we've created a shared experience through books. And by reading books like the vanishing half and talk about what it means to lose family, whether it was through political disagreement or illness and how it felt and how that echoes through generations. So those books provide a very powerful commonality that you can talk about in a safe way, even if you're out of person. And I am gonna tell you that having online book groups is the best. Nobody's ever late, nobody has to commute. There's no snacks. I don't have to reserve the room. It is the best. So. 
I would absolutely encourage you to create a community of readers however you can. And of course, as you guys know, as professional librarians, one of the most amazing ways to do that is through reading. So if you have questions, please put them in the chat. And if you wanted to tell me about a book you read that helped you process your experience in this last year, let's put it in the chat too. Thank you, Peggy George. You guys can chat to me or unmute and talk to me. You all now have the ability to unmute yourselves again. I was supposed to leave five minutes for questions and I felt like I was super rushing at the end, so sorry. I am happy to give you all the great ideas. We, I did not have a bad year. I know that that seems like an unusual statement for a teacher, but my year was okay. And a lot of it was okay because of the community of students and the community of teachers that I had at my back. Can you explain the rules to Zoom Assassin? Yes. <laughs> Zoom, have you ever played, um, what was the game? It's an app. Uh, uh, About Us or something? Is it something? Among Us. Thank Among you. Us. <laughs> Among Us. It is the same. So it's the same kind of game where you have an assassin and the assassin can private chat to somebody and say, you're dead. And then if you do that to me, then I now dr die dramatically on camera. <laughs> and then I turn my video off. And then we all unmute as a class and try and figure out who the assassin is. And if we can't, or we pick somebody who is the wrong answer, then the assassin can kill somebody with next. So the best part about it was the cameras on behavior and normalizing the cameras on behavior and also the dramatic deaths that the kids came up with was pretty darn hilarious. It was good. <laughs> the bingo was nice. It definitely helped like put those inside jokes in a format where we're like, oh yeah, remember that from August? That was really funny. And now they can remember forward to in-person time, which is great. It looks like Carla had a question. Um, how do you build a community of readers among students who don't want to read and view it as homework? I would not read with um, students who don't want to read. I would start with games. It's much easier to meet them where they are. Like start with games, start with um, structured social time, and then add, you know, like, oh, we have a new game. Let's read the instructions. <laughs> you know, you know, do a superhero club. And then once you get past the superhero clubs, and then you can build in the comic books. Once you have the comic books goes, now you can have Miles Morales. He's a superhero. And just move slow, but meet them where they are and then go forward. I love audiobooks. I have a kid in my book group who's a swimmer. And she listens to our group books instead of reading them. She is also a struggling reader and much prefers that format. It's fine with me. I feel like audiobooks are amazing. And she has moved from a place of reluctant reader where reading is just uncool to reading is cool because I'm in this group and this group is really funny and I like this group. So I have to read in order to be in this group. And that's awesome right? It does engage the brain in a totally different way. And if I had a longer commute, I probably, when I did have a longer commute, I was like the audiobook queen of the universe, right? Or in quarantine, when I was running outside, also I run really slow when I run outside, but apparently audiobooks, audiobooks was my jam. So, totally recommend. Yeah, no, me either. I have to be like, one of my hobbies is inappropriate cross-stitch and I can listen to audiobooks while I cross-stitch and that's great. <laughs> mm -hmm. Or run and that's fun. Well, thank you guys so much for your time. I appreciate you guys coming out to see me. 
You are welcome. It was great to meet y'all. If you would like to contact me outside, I, this is my Twitter and Facebook and everything is just I am Craddock. And you are welcome to hit me up on social media. Oh, I was just on the Librarian Influencers podcast. I feel like that was kind of cool. <laughs> All right, y'all. I hope you have awesome sessions today. Allison, I'm going to stop recording. Excellent. Thank you very okay. much.